What's cracking, YouTube? We are joined with Mr. Jack Lamar Jackson, aka Baby Goat Settlement, and Mr. Peter Overzet, two BDG three holders competing in the Big Dog Bash this year. This is going to be a weekly segment that goes out every Wednesday morning on the YouTube channel where I bring in someone from the BDG three Discord that has a, an influential as shit role in there. So you know they're making rules, they're um, they're influencing people in there. Every move they make, the eye the eyeballs are on it. So just make sure you guys come correct today. We're going to talk about the Bash. We're going to talk about their drafts. We're going to talk about any situations they got going on in Week One. I know Jack probably needs help setting his lineup. I've seen what he's done in a draft room before. Uh, we just want to kind of, you know, chop it up and, and see what's going on in their league and um, and just general, you know, just friends having fun over here. In this economy, that's all you can ask for. So welcome in, boys and girls. Um, how are we today? Lamar Jackson, a.k.a. Baby Goat. Well, I think Pete and I are wondering the same thing. Who's the influential person that you brought on for this episode? Well, it was me. I'm if waiting. You, you only introduced Jack. I'm still waiting for my big introduction. Well, I, I did introduce you. I introduced you basically since Jack is in all uppercase. Like that's how I introduce him. And you're just like a little Pete in the bottom Pete. left corner. So that was the energy. You asked for the energy that you received, Pete. Okay, that's fair. I that's think I did I though. If it. you play back the tape, I said Peter over. No, there, no, huh? you did. You did. But then you were making the intro to like how's everyone doing and you were going to start with me and then i think you were going to get to pete's thoughts but i think he's upset that he didn't get his initial thought either i'm uh pete, yeah i'm updating okay. my name and there does it is that loud and clear here <laughs> <laughs> what, Jack, what's the deal with this this baby goat thing like is, this is still a thing? I, I mean, I thought we just all agreed Lamar Jackson's awesome. Why do you still feel like you need to pound the table? He's also been in the league for five years, not a baby yeah, anymore. It's not a baby. I know. This He's is, I said, all right. So thankfully, he hasn't signed his contract. So technically, He's on his baby, a.k.a. rookie contract. But this is the year. If he doesn't turn into the GOAT, a.k.a. win a Super Bowl, then I might have to move on. I said that after last season, but he got hurt. So, it was, you know, it extends to this year. If Lamar doesn't win the Super Bowl this year, the nickname might get retired as it pertains to Lamar Jackson. When you say move on, like you're done, like you don't want Lamar anymore if you don't win your Super Bowl, or you're done with the baby GOAT nickname? I'm done calling him the baby GOAT. Like, I, it, I – accidentally called him the baby goat so preseason he has this touchdown run against the packers and i just captioned on my story you know the baby goat and thus the name is born then you start hearing it all over tyler hero luca they just start calling it became a thing it wasn't a thing before then and then so it just became his nickname i use it then he wins the mvp we're 14 and 2 and then since then trajectory has gone the wrong direction so the nickname doesn't work as well but a lot of people know him as the baby goat, but now we haven't won anything. So yeah, nickname might have to go. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't realize you started that entire trend there. So congrats, yes. sir. Thank Throwing you. out fucking fake sources. Donovan Mitchell coming to the Knicks. I started the baby goat. I don't know what's going to come out of your mouth. I'm officially out of the source game. Um, I, the world is a better place for that. I'm at, Although I have my best source of all time, literally of all time. I will take any bet that you're not out of the source game. <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. I'm legally out of the source game. Wait, speak on that. Let's I go. am entering into a contract with a media company, and and, and I can no said longer jackass on Twitter. I can no longer source stuff, which is ironic because I literally have the greatest source of all time on the biggest news pop of all time i'll just say this like when the tom brady news comes down know that i had it all right just leave it there why don't yeah, you just it's that tom brady's getting a divorce everyone had it <laughs> <laughs> why don't you cipher your source over to us we're in a group chat already just add the guy in i'm not peddling that shit i don't want jack <laughs> sloppy seconds <laughs> I'll gladly take it. I do, just, you, do you want to be in the source game, Nick? You already hate everyone. People hate source people. <laughs> I already hate everyone. Uh, no, nah, I definitely don't want to be in the source game, but I don't know. It looks so much fun when you do it. You just like throw shit out there and then like hope it hits, hope it sticks. Like that feels like it's my energy. Just it say is. shit. And then if people get angry about it, it's like sick. Like I can just fight with them in the comment section. Exactly. What if you could combine like shit posting energy with source energy? And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking more like you got to make it super casual. I'm trying to think how we could do this. <laughs> I, that's kind of what I'm I'm going for. Uh, yeah. my, we need but a now, like I said, I'm retired. I'm retired. 
We need a vessel. We need someone like the fantasy counselor who like we we have the sources, we get the scoops and then we feed it to right. him. But we like we make sure that we feed him like three or four good ones in a row so that he trusts us. And then we feed him a fucking zinger that's just way out of left field and it's wrong. And then he can fight people after that. I was just going to say, I do think because once I retired from the source game officially, uh, I was like, how could I still get the dopamine? And then it led me to this thought. I do think there's like a very large opportunity for an anonymous source account. Like right now, especially through the Donovan Mitchell stuff, like Woj was getting fed stuff by Danny Ainge for leverage, right? And now these source guys are no longer like they are supposed to be independent. And you'll see Woj like tweet out something being like, oh, the uh, whatever Timberwolves trade for Rudy Gobert, the GM in Minnesota has been amazing capturing draft picks getting Anthony Edwards like you can tell who's being paid to tweet stuff and I think Schefter's talked about this stuff before but like if there was an anonymous one you could get the best scoops if you kept that in an an amenity and I think there's an opportunity there put that (laughs) if you kept that what (laughs) I whatever the word is in an an amenity (laughs) that was fucking incredible I'd pay to fucking hear you say that on on repeat (laughs) that's um, my source right there <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay let's uh let's move away from adam and the minimis and let's move over to the big dog bash where y'all drafted along with 50 other 48 other leagues last sunday uh we somehow had no technical hiccups that i know of i mean looking at jack's draft it looks like maybe what happened your internet connection went down is that why you made some of those picks jack or no is my is my draft i'm looking at it now because i I actually had a bunch of drafts and i said i was going to do just about zero redraft leagues and i end up in the bash the sleeper bowl we got knights fantasy my team do or do you have it up here yeah yeah i got it up on the board now your league 31 you had pick three this was one of my favorite leagues from like a brand standpoint because i know personally like five people in this league we got jordan reigns at the uh the 101 who was like an avid big dog bash like supporter when we were getting absolutely like wrecked in the middle of uh, like the launch originally and he was like fuck everybody fuck this fuck that and i was like yo i like you dog like idp army over there ej is a kid from uh the nyc draft weekend when we have the kids fly out for the uh the subscriber weekend uh cali dog is just an absolute psycho but one of my favorite people in the world he's in one of like our deepest dynasty leagues if you guys jack i don't know if you've checked like the group chats but if you don't have uh, a full body nude from yannick sent in the group chat yet i would be extremely surprised which leads me to the last person and i hope he didn't do it because anna um anna like literally found us through tiktok this year through guessing ike's lunch has never played football fantasy football like doesn't follow sports i don't think but was just so just so into what we were doing that she was like fuck it i'm gonna join the bash so your league is so her draft is contingent on your fantasy football advice right like is that a fair assumption to make looking at the team (laughs) she i'll just say she did her best she did her best for not having any knowledge all right if i had to say anything about it nice value on mac jones there (laughs) <laughs> let's go <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's look at my draft here dalvin cook at the 102 not by me that was insanity that's like, surprising what is the source what do, what source does dimbowski have that said everything about justin herbert kyler murray pat Mahomes, jonathan taylor austin eckler Najee harris and mccaffrey that made him think let's get dalvin at 102 I'll tell you what, if Dembowski comes on this show, his StreamYard username is going to be Dalvin Cook, Dalvin Cook Baby Goat in all caps. That's the only way to account for this kind of selection over JT and Austin Eckler in uh, in McCaffrey in a, a super flex league. So yeah. super flex, this is my first super flex league I've ever drafted, actually, outside of some best ball stuff. And Al went first. I I'm not a huge Herbert fantasy person this year. I'm actually big Mahomes, but I was like, I'll get Lamar on Bram. Stacked him with Andrews. First tight end, or sorry, right after Kelsey. So I don't know if that's good value on Kelsey. You got him before. You took Andrews at one. Yeah, you took Andrews first. Right. So I I did I did stack Andrews with Devontae. It's full point PPR. Uh no, half PPR. Half, Normally half you check PPR. the scoring settings before you draft. It's just kind of <laughs> what I try to do. Uh that seems smart. And then I got Matt Stafford, which that is right. That was the last quarterback taken b- before Matt Ryan two rounds later. I like Stafford. 
I was I was fading the uh, the elbow news, and then the Dobbin stuff is tough because a lot of people were like, "Well, Dobbins, don't listen. He'll be back. He'll get into a full workload." Each day, it sounds like that's not going to be the case. But I think my squad's pretty set. My wideouts are value. Devontae so you you went Baltimore heavy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you got a total of like a total of like four working kneecaps in your starting lineup as of as of week one like two Scroll elbows four and kneecaps let me see how ball did, does he have the james prochet on here that's a settlement no, i don't i don't i don't were you shot with devin took... duvernay was atop the depth chart today uh you really... i was i i don't know why i drafted Taysom hill i have no fucking clue that's why insanity you were just like weird draft weird league let me just take the worst fucking weirdest player what's up you with literally... the jimmy garoppolo pick this is the worst pick i've ever seen like what are we doing did i draft jimmy j <laughs> yeah Dude, Odell Beckham, no knees. James <laughs> Robinson, no Achilles. J.K. Dobbins, no knee. Godwin, no knees. Stafford, no help. This is, <laughs> I love this. It's the all upside team. I love the risk that you're taking. Um, yeah. You know what I did? Unfortunately, I, I have a lot of Baltimore. I have Andrews and Rashad Bateman without Lamar Jackson, which is just, mm. uh, I feel like an absolutely atrocious avenue to go down in fantasy football. Well, could you have gotten Lamar? Uh, I was at the 104, and I want to say it went Allen, JT, or JT Allen. I don't remember who went three. Either way, I was taking Herbert over Lamar Jackson. You're, Drafting you're Jonathan for... Taylor is insane in a super flex. I mean, it's not insane uh, if Dalvin Cook goes <laughs> one, two. <laughs> There's no, no such you're thing playing... as insane. Nick, you're, uh, yeah, you're just playing for what happened last year. Uh, no Lamar Jackson. Tyler Huntley comes in and balls out to the top two pass catchers. Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, if you look at their, if you look at their depth chart, there's nothing behind those two. Like it's going to be, you know, I've dropped this stat a, a bunch of times. Uh, Andrews and Hollywood, in terms of team target share, they had the two highest combined team target share of any two players in the NFL last year. And this year, it's like what? Like fucking Devin Duvernay, James Prochet behind them. I don't think any of the running backs are going to be healthy for a minute, right? It's like Mike Davis and Kenyon Drake. So they're going to have to throw the ball a lot, way more than they want to. So I think it's going to be a replicant of basically last year. So I wanted Bateman because I liked him as a prospect. I wanted Andrews because he's just elite at the position. Looking back on it, I don't know if I love you know having the entire passing offense for a team that runs the ball like fucking 70% of the time. But it is what it is. We're here to talk about you guys. Stop. How do we get into bullying? me well i like my team what do you think pete i mean I, some things i really like i think chris godwin is just the most mispriced player in drafts he legit might play week one and he's yeah. still just been going in the fifth sixth round of drafts gabe davis smash it's it really just fell off the rails late for me that the garoppolo pick over some of these more kind of exciting backups like if you want take take malik willis take desmond ritter if you i want got malik willis out. I'm I know, elite. but he I'm took, elite. you took Jimmy Garoppolo way ahead of him. I've tilted. I've tilted. This was pick. before he signed the backup thing. I really was like uber convinced he was going to be traded and start week one. And I'm shocked that he wasn't. Like, when you're genuinely to. shocked. Uh, so I thought I was going to get three starting quarterbacks on the roster, which could have held over a little Stafford injury if that was the case. Then Malik for upside. I still don't know why I drafted Taysom Hill. Like genuinely no clue. The Adams pick is a smash. That was a really nice value on Adams there. To get an elite wide receiver at the back end of the second round is, is nice. I, I got Adams at the, I think the 304 in mine. And wow, I was like, really? I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even really want him because I'm not really sure what kind of ceiling he has, but he's, he's fell off so fucking far. The, uh, I have not been drafting a lot of James Conner. I'm an Eno Benjamin boy. He, Conner terrifies me. Same, dude. I'm all Why? Right what? Yeah. Talk me through the, why we don't like James. So I think, Everyone last year, when you look at James Conner's splits with and without Chase Edmonds, um, you know, Conner was scoring touchdowns even when Edmonds was around. And then it was when Edmonds got hurt that they treated him like a bell cow. They started throwing to him. So I think how they want to use him ideally is, yeah, he's going to get goal line work, early stuff, but they want a complimentary back. And I think teams sometimes when injuries happen midseason, they're like, we don't have anything better. So you just have to be the bell cow and all the talk out of camp and bringing in Darrell Williams, who I think, you know, Benjamin clearly surpassed. I just think it's going to be more of a committee thing and it's going to be a little frustrating for people who are drafting him as a bell cow. 
Yeah, I think Eno's probably going to get that chase role. My only concern is that, like, they've kind of told us what they think about Eno since he's been in the league, too. You know, it's almost like he had every opportunity to be what we think he's going to be this year, and it just never happened. So, I don't know. It kind of feels like maybe James Conner comes out of the gate with a huge workload, and maybe it dwindles down towards the end of the season. But there's just – it feels like there's so many – maybe it feels like there's more red flags than there actually is for James Conner. But in so many ways, his efficiency was so bad last year. He was a really high touchdown scorer. Like, everything about it feels like it was a little bit fluky but he's in a really, really good. Um, the only, the only role. counter. One last thing is, mm-hmm. if you go to that draft board, Nick. Yeah. So Connor, I took him after Josh Jacobs, That's and yeah. and then there wasn't another running back touch till like Montgomery, Dylan, Acres, and then a whole nother cast until Elijah Mitchell. I just think he is in that second tier, and so I like the value of that. I, I mean, him, yeah, him maybe AJ Dylan, maybe AJ Dylan. But like, I'd rather have Connor over Acres, over Montgomery, over some other. So How much were you guys. sweating that Bateman fall? Because I personally like Gabe Davis better as a pick than Bateman. But you, as Mister Baby Go himself, I mean the Bateman Andrews Jackson stack, you had to do a been trying to dial that up. Yeah, did you want that? I yeah, I did have that queued up, but not something I'm like in dire need for. Like I really think if you have Lamar Andrews or Lamar Bateman you're you're good like there's high target share but there weren't many games where both andrews and hollywood went crazy and so over the course of a season it might be beneficial but i think like there's probably gonna be a ton of weeks where gabe davis scores touchdowns and so does andrews you know what i realized about your team too um and jack i don't even know if you actually know the fucking rules to the bash but it's a regular season and then after 12 weeks two people from each league the top two teams move on to what we're calling the bash and then it's the top 50 percent of the team scoring wise for that week will move on and that starts in week 13 so there's a lot of teams week 13 i think has two teams that are on by and one of them is arizona so you have james connor but you don't have a single player outside of robert tunyon and Taysom hill or two players um that probably won't be on your team by them that are on buys that week and there are six teams in the nfl that have bye weeks that week so i'm really interested to see what happens during those weeks and see i'm assuming you didn't like draft based on those settings at all I didn't know if it was full point PPR. What the <laughs> fuck you think? I'm trying to navigate but, a podcast over here for God's it's fucking great. sake. No, it's great to know how sharp I am, even when it's by accident. Yeah, sure. Did either of you guys change your fucking names in the league? Are we supposed to? We had our first giveaway today. Um, everyone in the office chose our favorite team names in, in the bash, and they won uh, 0.06 ETH each person. They got half their buy-in back for it. What what were the winnings? Or, uh, like, what were the winning names? Uh, my team name winner was uh, Josh Norris bullied me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the guy who's playing against Josh Norris in week one, so it's, like, the ultimate mind fuck kind of name right because josh josh to me seems like he might have been a closet bully in high school right like he's so nice now this might be a um a way to get in his head where josh will see this and be like holy shit it might be the guy i used to pick on in high school you know let me start uh austin hooper instead of mark andrews this week or something like that you know so i was i just thought it was a really uh a really good chess move by the by the guy who whoever named that his team that like what, that. what were the other winning names? Uh, animals was like fucking Boner Forest or something like that. Um, what is our generation's uh, two Mannings, one cup or whatever? I mean, what, what's the go to? These nuts. We had you have Sa- Saquon, these nuts, uh, CDs, nuts, you know, like all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 40% yeah. of the names ended in these nuts. Yeah. How, how inappropriate could you get? Uh, we had a ton of inappropriate. I think like cum might have been in like five percent. We had a bunch of like, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely whatever. You, the 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 contest is already closed though. N- nice to see we're creating such a welcoming environment for all the ladies coming over from TikTok into the BDGE universe. We want them. We want to make them feel like they can <laughs> they can be themselves. You know, I don't want to hold anyone back. But yeah, we're putting we're we're gonna be like announcing these giveaways basically like daily, just shit like that, like team names. So if you're in the Discord, just pop in and see what the the most recent announcements are, because we're gonna be just throwing out fucking ETH left and right at people just for doing weird stuff. Pete, let's let's check out your check out your draft real quick. I can't believe I had to. Uh, I was hoping I could shame Jack that he missed out on Lamar Jackson, and then I could flex my Lamar Jackson team, but. He stayed on brand. All right, Pete, you are in League 15. You had the 107. Oh, and you took, yeah, you got Lamar Jackson as well. And, like, unsurprisingly, there's zero green on the screen here. Looking like your fucking bank account over there. You, I mean, you went in, like, you were like, I got an entrance into this for free. Let me just absolutely fully fucking send it on my brand. So let me, I need to, I'm an honest guy. 
I'm a man of the people. I like to be transparent. I had a helper on this draft. We were actually drafting while I was on Sirius XM. So shout out to <laughs> my guy, Frankie, who was uh, talking through all these decisions with me. Uh, I am going to own up to every one of these decisions, but I do got to shout out Frankie for helping me with my bash team. Uh, but yeah, the, it's, it was a very on brand draft for us. I mean, Jack has to be reeling at this value. I got Lamar Jackson at one of seven and don't let the other Dalvin Cook owner see that he went two two here. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so you went four wide receivers, got your second quarterback, two more wide receivers, um, and then just sent it on a bunch of later round running backs. I think Jeff Wilson might be your best pick. Jeff Wilson. I mean, we kind of double tap the uh, the Niners there, just thinking one of those guys is going to be the backup to, to Eli Mitchell there. Let's take some cracks. Feel good about Singletary Pollard. Rashad White moved to the top of the depth chart behind Leonard Fournette today, feeling good about him. This is just how I build. And then uh, you get some Abdullah. He's going to have a pass down roll. We'll piece it together, work the waiver wire. And then we'll see you in the bash. Yeah, it's an insane, an insane build by It's you. just insane. Like <laughs> I draft Jeff Wilson. There's no mention. It's just about Taysom Hill and Odell Beckham, no knees. But then <laughs> best pick is Jeff Wilson. Well, it's because Wilson. there's a method to the madness. You're just spraying and praying. This is a you know a structural draft with purpose. I think that speaks more to your team. I just think you had so many good picks that like Got Jeff it. Wilson was like your 11th best pick. Why even bring him up in a 30 minute right. podcast? What round um, did you get Gabe Davis in, Jack? Was that sixth? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, imagine not six, getting ten. In, in the seventh. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> You you have a pretty uh, a pretty stacked league just from people in the fantasy industry. Like you got Cody Cart from Road Underworld right behind you. Brett Coleman, who I love his film analysis, but his fantasy stuff could use a little bit of work. Love that he took like Brian Robinson, who I, I feel like the Brian Robinson news dropped probably before he even. It was in the middle of my. Was draft. it in the dead middle of my? Oh. Actually, go. Do you have my board still up? No, we're done talking Jack, about you. Yeah, Jack. I know. No, no, no. Like just I, it's because, not up anymore yeah i i think the guy it happened in like uh, the eighth round of everyone's draft i think for the no, most part. no no he so he drafted him and then i like then the notification came through and i was like damn that sucks yeah it was it was that it was almost exactly at where brett took brian robinson in this one the news popped up because we had a bunch of people in the office drafting that day so everyone was like oh shit like the brian robinson news neither of the washington backs had been taken and I was sitting there at like the eight, uh, eight, eight or eight, nine or whatever. And I had only taken one running back up to that point. So I'm sitting there like, let's go. Like Gibson gets me, gets me, gets me. No one took Brian Robinson. I jumped on Gibson at the, at the eight, eight. And I still feel horrible about it. I feel like grime, not because of like the news. I just feel grimy because Gibson stinks. Oh, I thought, I mean, the way you were like, let's go. I was like, that's an interesting take on it. Yeah, but I just, hey, I got excited is... in the moment. It was a short term nut, you know, but I realized who Gibson <laughs> is as, as a player. I Post I gotta give a shout exactly. I gotta give shout outs. I know uh, people always don't like zero RB drafts when they're posted, but you guys created a format here that is extremely wide receiver friendly. I mean, getting to start up to mm -hmm. five wide receivers, you could do six if you wanted to use your super flex on it too. So like to me, you know, sometimes people are like, why are you drafting wide receivers when you've already filled out your starting lineup? I mean, I didn't fill out my starting lineup until the Gabe Davis pick, you know, Elijah Moore was the first kind of bench guy I took. So this, this format really did allow you to build however you wanted. I regretted. And the only regret I have with our format is not making this tight end premium. Mm. Because if you make, if we had made this tight end premium, every position would have hold held like really, really strong value. Cause people draft running backs just because, you know, people love running backs, QBs, super flex, obviously tight end would have been premium three wide receivers. So you could start up to five. That was the only regret we had on this, but this is only a year for right now. So we plan on basically going through this entire year, seeing like the best parts of it, cutting those out, putting that back into practice next year and kind of like improving what we've seen throughout the year in terms of like everything from the people in it, the actual league settings, like the prize giveaways and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that makes sense to me too, because in most of my drafts, I do try to prioritize elite tight ends, but the bigger your starting lineups are, the less that positional advantage is. So when you can start so many, it's like watered down. You know, if I'm mm -hmm. crushing you with Kyle Pitts to your Tyler Higby, and we only are starting like six or seven guys, that's huge. But when the benches are there, the starting lineups are this big, um, it's not as big of an edge. And that's why I ended up just punting it in this format, just knowing I wanted to be starting five banged out wide receivers every week. Dude, I, I 
I don't know what happened to me. And I've always been a guy who's kind of like faded tight end, but this year I'm in four redraft leagues and I have, uh, I guess sleeper bowl too. I don't remember who we have there, but my personal redraft leagues, I've gone with an elite tight end in all four of them. I have Andrews in three of them and I have Kelsey in the other one, but none of them are like huge, huge starting lineups. So I've just kind of felt the urge to go with them this year. Cause I'm like, I've, I went, I kind of went with the zero RB strategy. I've hopefully got one like really solid one up top or like hero RB, whatever you call it. Yeah. And then just nailed wide receivers until my starting lineups are like split with a really good tight end in there. But I'm yeah. I'm really interested to see how these like how how the league plays out and what kind of strategy like really pushes through in this. Yeah, it'll it will be it'll be fun. And like the way it'll work too with the bash is you'll have because the top two teams are advancing, a lot of like if you guys ran this tournament last year, everyone showing up in the bash would have Mark Andrews, Cooper Cup, Jonathan Taylor. Like those are going to be the league winners. And then it'll mm-hmm. be who are the unique guys after you advance to the bash that really emerge and help you separate from the other teams. Yeah, Jimmy that's going to be funny too. And... <laughs> yeah, Jimmy G is the guy you need in the bash. <laughs> Jeff in Wilson, 16. Jimmy G. Yeah, the whole 49ers. <laughs> yeah, the Jimmy G, Jeff Wilson stat. <laughs> Who's Kittle's backup? I might get him. I might pick him up for uh, Taysom Hill. I don't even I know who it is. I have no idea. Blake I did Bell went Blake. on the IR. Yeah. I, I, I was just going to say, what a news hound. Is that one of your sources told you that? <laughs> yeah. At underdog NFL. All I'm right, curious. Um, I'm Googling Niners depth chart to figure out the uh, – Tyler Croft is over there now. Ooh, okay. He can play. He can play. Yeah. He can yeah. play some ball. There was actually a quote uh, out of Niners camp the other day that they wanted Croft blocking more. It's now coming back to me because they wanted to free up Kittle more as a wide receiver, which is obviously music to our ears. Yeah, I don't give a shit. All right. Uh, do you guys have any? St- I, I'll get you guys out of here because we're just over the thirty minute mark. Do you guys have any like tough decisions? Any sit starts in week one that that you, that we need Jack's help for? Yes. Uh, my tough decision would be if Dobbins is a go, is he even a start or like James? Like I'm between Dobbins and James Robinson. I feel like I'm pretty cooked there. <laughs> yeah, your your team, and you need to be the healer where you just go around with holy water and heal everyone on your team. <laughs> I mean, if Dobbins, like, I I actually want your opinion on this, Jack, because we have Dobbins clapping back at people saying, hey, it's not a limp. I'm good to go. Harbaugh says all of his quickness is back. And yet, like, what are you believing? Like, do you think he's he's good? Because it's been so confusing. Honestly, I'm so fucking confused with the Ravens training staff. Like, Stanley has played one game in the last 29 after he signed his contract. You've got Dobbins. Gus Edwards isn't back. Justice Hill took a while. Did he got hurt last year? It sounds like he's fully healthy. Marcus Peters didn't even get spoken about for the past nine months. And then they were like, he's back at practice. No word on if he's going to play on Sunday. So as far as week one, I don't even think there's like a big upside case. Like what's the best case? He's 12 carries, two catches, and he scores two touchdowns. Yeah. Like it's just very limited. But I guess the same could be said for James Robinson and James Cook uh, on Thursday for me, which is why week one, I- I'm kind of just screwed. It but- leaves you it leaves you with one one real option, the one holy option, Jeffrey Wilson. Jeffrey you have, Wilson. You have to go Wilson here. Honestly, it's not it's not the worst. The problem what about James that- Cook? Not James Cook? There's an no. I think James Cook could be fine, but half point PPR, probably a smaller role right out of the gate for him. Mm -hmm. Full season outlook. It's funny. Like I wasn't that obsessed with Dobbins last year and everyone else was because they were like top rushing offense, all that in no situation ever with Lamar is there going to be like a, a heavy usage running back. Like they're always going to use him. I mean, I guess Mark Ingram that first year, he just scored a shit ton of touchdowns, but like, Mm -hmm. Dobbins isn't rushing for 1,500 yards. Why, why are you well. fudding your own pick? I mean, you, now you're just trashing on this selection. You made. <laughs> I'm in on Dobbins. I think that the sell on Dobbins is that he's by far their most explosive running back yes. in the backfield. Yeah. It's not even close. But he's, he's not um, going to be that for a minute, though. Like The fact that we're don't not... Don't tell him that. <laughs> He'll come after you, bro. <laughs> the fact that he's not... Like every report is like, we don't know if he's going to be ready for week one. We're like four days away from week one. And like, we have no idea. That's probably meaning he's not going to be like above 65 to 75% in week one. I don't think there's a chance that you could play him. I'm playing. But also like you give us no option with your other (laughs) option. Jack's going to roll out like six guys recovering from ACL. And one of them will be a smash, but it won't matter because they're all coming back. (laughs) I'm going to be honest. I think I play James Cook here if I'm you. Yeah, you probably are. You're probably right. Yeah. 
Uh, what about you, Pete? You got anything? What are you, League 15? Right? Um, I mean, as usual, I'm pretty hard-pressed with my running back, too. I'm just going to have to roll. I feel fine with Singletary on Thursday night. Pollard, I kind of wish he's a guy I could take a peek on and see how they're using him. I guess I could get really cute and play Abdullah, but I'm just going to roll out Pollard. Yeah, I kind of like Pollard in this one, though. They don't have a lot of pass-catching weapons right now. Oh, you got Jeff Wilson. got to do it. I think both you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start um, Jeff Wilson as, as twins in solidarity? <laughs> See, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a to. bad move. Wilson plus Debo. You got two running backs on the roster. Yeah, but that's all they're going to do is run the ball. So I'll mm-hmm. take it. With Trey Lance. The problem, man, is I'm so excited about the Niners. And then you go and look at that game. They're five and a half point road favorites, but it's a 41 and a half over under. Vegas is like, this disgusting. is going to be a gross, disgusting game. Who do they play? <laughs> the Bears? Bears. Yeah, it's going to be gross. This Niners are going to like milk the clock for 70% of the game, but they're going to run the ball like 45 times. It'll be like 22 pass See, attempts because they don't need to throw the The fantasy ball. nerds can tell you who's on bye week in week 13, week 16 and week 17 correlation, but it's only the betting degenerates who know every single week one matchup because they've had that shit outlined for months and months on end yeah i think we will wrap it up there pete d <laughs> pdd's nuts lamar jackson aka Clever, huh? baby dude it's so good you you're about to start a trend amongst our generation for sure dude uh thank y'all for joining us thank you guys for coming on for some i don't have a name for this bash uh bash trash bash yeah that's a working title we'll figure it out pete, you're very <laughs> so are you. we'll just call this 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 podcast weekly sources that's, that's what the title behind of the, the be. bash the actor studio there you go you mean the actor studio what the fuck does that mean <laughs> it's a reference just look it up <laughs> okay uh all right we're getting out of here um yeah i don't have a fucking thing to say subscribe like follow these two idiots on twitter i'll put their stuff down in the description goodbye <laughs>